حضرت محمد مصطفیٰ اسلام احمدیت غلام احمد کی نارے تکبیر اشہد اللہ الہ الا اللہ و دہو لا شریک لہو و اشہد ان محمد نبتہ و رسولو اما بعد فاؤز باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ رب العالمین الرحمن الرحیم مالک یوم الدین ایاکا نعبدو و ایاکا نستعین اہدنا السراط المستقیم السراط اللذین آنمت علیہم غیر المقصوب علیہم والدوالین I am uh, grateful for the opportunity to speak to you today. It is a great honor for me as it was in the past and it is today. And I hope and I pray that uh, as participants in this Jalsa Salana West Coast 2013, all of us become the true beneficiaries of the prayers of the Promised Messiah alayhi salam. Khalifat al-Masih al-Khamis emphasized in his Friday sermon a couple of days ago and he emphasized in a way that this would be, should be considered as a prime reason for the Jalsas that we develop love and compassion and brotherhood amongst ourselves and that we feel and we share the sorrow and happiness of our brethren and that we develop a bond so that we move forward as a unified community rather than a fragmented community. There was a magazine survey piece that was done a couple of years ago and they asked the question who was who has changed the world more Bill Gates or Mother Teresa about 80 percent respondents thought it was Bill Gates amongst the ones who thought it was Mother Teresa was an 11 year old girl and she said, Bill Gates used the power of money to change the world and Mother Teresa used the power of love to change the world. And I think she said, love is more powerful than money. Very profound words from coming from an 11 year old. And our greatest hopes for awakening our collective compassion comes from children. In the year 2012, the most searched phrase on Google was what is love? And love means to make a conscious effort to desire what is best in God's eyes for the person who is the object of that love combined with a willingness to do whatever is in your power to bring about that. Compassion can be one of the motivating forces that causes a person to make such a decision regarding another human being. And compassion usually precedes love, though at times the words are used interchangeably. 
the thing about the thing about the law of compassion and love is that it has a half life that is far greater than the law of gadgets and the law of material stuff and its impact lasts for many generations inspiration from our gadgets usually lasts a few seconds or a few minutes but inspiration from love and compassion as i said lasts for generations <clears throat> as i was coming to this jalsa from cleveland the other day there was a woman seat, seated next to me i was sitting on the aisle seat and she was uh, on my left hand side and uh, for those of you who do not know i am one of the few conservatives in our jamaat i i had a book in my hand that was written by a conservative columnist and apparently this woman <coughs> happened to be a hardcore liberal and she looked at the book and uh, after an hour or so in flight she started to talk to me about politics and then went off on a tangent about conservatives so i tried to be nice nice to her but in a moment of weakness i told her what churchill said about liberalism churchill said liberalism is a philosophy of failure it's a creed of ignorance and a gospel of envy and its inherent virtue is the sharing of misery so when i said that to her she got a little more upset and i found myself trying to get out of it and i knew i was not going to win this battle so i looked at her quietly and i saw that in her right hand long finger she had a strange ring on so to change the subject i asked her what that ring was and she says to me it's the wedding ring and i said don't you have it on the wrong finger and she says that's because i married the wrong guy <laughs> so, so after that our travel was a little more pleasant so given the disappointing results that we have all been experiencing in our tarbiyat and our rishta nata issues it is fair to ask are we married to the wrong strategy i believe we do khalifat al masih al khamis is painstakingly reminding us every week to carry out an introspective analysis and to reform ourselves and to break the cycle of bad habits and build our relationships with man and god we americans are a society with an extreme reliance on self help we want to do everything our own way and we think that by looking or looking at television watching dr phil or opera and yoga and zen all these things can somehow make ourselves a better people or a more spiritual people now we ahmadis especially our younger generation they want to americanize islamic teachings as well and they would secular secularize all these teachings to fit this pattern of uh, uh things that would they think would make us better the holy quran and the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam have already given us the prescription that would make us a better, better people 
where they are better people in dealing with each other and also a more godly people. As Mirza Hassan said and recited the verse, the Holy Prophet Muhammad who was all humility, that God had to command him to say, Kul inna salati wa nusuki wa ma yaya wa ma mati lillahi rabbil alameen Say that my prayer and my sacrifice and my life and my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the world. So this prescription is that we become more humble, we exercise humility, submission, prayers and sacrifice. Because the object of man's existence is to seek union with God through cultivation of divine attributes with him. So cultivation of divine attributes is a tall order and we need to exercise extreme protection once we acquire, is, acquire these att attributes. And we must focus on the phenomenon of uh, entropy. Hazrat Khalifat al-Masih, Hazrat Khalifat al-Masih Rabi Rahmullah Ta'ala has written a whole chapter on entropy in his book, Revelation Rationality. Entropy, simply put, means everything ages and it wears out. And it is the second law of thermodynamics. So most of the people who deal with physics would know. So this law of entropy, I believe, also <coughs> applies to our hearts and souls as well. Because willpower alone, or our efforts alone, will not overcome the natural decay of these attributes and if we are left to ourselves we will tend to degenerate and we become more decadent. So the solution is we need outside help or maintenance and we need the grace and mercy of Allah and God needs a willing and a humble spirit that seeks his grace and it is his grace that will stall spiritual entropy. So acquiring good and spiritual excellence is a continuous journey and it is not a destination and the promised Messiah has emphasized this and he says salvation is entirely dependent on divine grace. You cannot achieve salvation by your own actions and effort. And then the promised Messiah says that man goes through spiritual highs and spiritual lows, which is cubs and bust, and he struggles to improve himself, and he stumbles. And he struggles, and he strives repeatedly using his abilities and following the ways that are taught to him and he repeatedly stumbles and then a time comes when Allah says ma shayta fa inni ghafarta laka that is do what you will the very nature of this man is changed he will no longer sin or he will no longer stumble but the important thing is the Promised Messiah goes on to say that even in that state, when you are in a state of sinlessness, astaghfar is necessary. He says it washes away spiritual, spiritual corrosion. Istighfar requires constancy. Through it, the soul obtains strength and the heart achieves steadfastness. The quality of innocence should not be regarded as a permanent possession of man, but God should be taken as the fountainhead for acquiring it. 
A sinless person needs to supplicate God for strength in as much as human nature possesses no excellence of its own, but receives excellence every moment from God and has no strength of its own, but receives strength every moment from God and has no perfect light of its own, but receives light from God. So having said this, you would realize that the biggest entropy busters that we have are Tawba, Istighfar, humility, and submission to the will of God. Obedience to the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and in our times, obedience to Khilafat are mandatory. Hazrat Saad bin Waqas was a companion of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and in his last years he became blind and he settled in Mecca and many people used to visit him to seek his blessings and prayers and he would oblige them and his prayers were often heard. Abdullah ibn Saad was a curious child at that time and he went to see him. So Saad bin Waqas was good to him and he prayed for him. And Abdullah bin Saad asked him, your prayers for others are, others always seem to be answered. Why then do you not pray for your blindness to be removed? And Hazrat Saad bin Waqas replied, Submission to the will of God is far better than the personal pleasure of being able to see. So the goal that we seek in our words and in our deeds and in everyday lives is that we seek the pleasure of Allah, what it is all about. There's a story of a Sufi saint who prayed to Allah. He said, O oh Allah, grant me the grace of never offending you again. And Allah laughed and said, everyone asks for, the, for this grace. And if I granted it to everyone, whom would I forgive? So it is important to realize <coughs> that we do what we have to, Allah does what he does, and uh, the, less, the rest we leave up to him. The attribute of forgiveness is always operative. If God had granted grace to everybody of never committing a sin or offending him, the attribute of forgiveness would become redundant and non-operative. And that doesn't happen. Also, hell is always in a state of flux with souls or people leaving and coming till Allah decides it will no longer function. There's a true story about a professor at uh, University of Washington. Uh, he, he asked this question in the midterm in a chemistry exam to his students. And he says, is hell endothermic, which means absorbs heat, or exothermic, gives out heat? And in addition, the students are supposed to write, support your answer with proof. So only one student got an A. And he had a long answer, but part of his answer was, the answer was that hell is exothermic, that is, it gives out heat. And he elaborated with some proof points. And he said, if hell is expanding at a slower rate than the rate at which souls or people 
enter hell, then the temperature and the pressure in hell will increase until all hell breaks loose. <laughs> on the other hand, on the other hand, if hell is expanding at a rate, then the rate of souls of people entering it, then the temperature and pressure will drop until hell freezes over. So, <clears throat> my submission to you is that if we perform as is expected to us, we are Muslims who believe in the Messiah, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani salam, and we are a different people. Much more is expected of us, and we are people of excellence, and as a people of excellence, it is imperative that we go the extra mile to acquire humility. We should strive to achieve excellence in humility, in Tawbah and Istighfar. We all know our lives are an aggregate of sins and lapses and transgressions but for the shelter of God's mercy on us, we would all be destroyed. And this mercy is attracted for us by the prayers of our elders, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu the Promised Messiah Sallam, and the Khulafa, and our parents, and our friends, and we are nourished and we are protected by these prayers. We, however, revel in the grace of God as if we had some inherent merit. There is an ancient tradition of God mentioned in the books. It says, God preserves humanity despite its many transgressions because at any one time there exists ten righteous people who redeem mankind by their good works. We, the followers of the Grand Prophet Muhammad and his Messiah, we believe and we hope and we pray that we are the people who will redeem mankind today with our prayers and our example and our good works inviting people back to God to become a spiritual and a moral people that we will continue to do this under the divine institution of Khilafat till the end of times. The verse in the Holy Quran <coughs> Kuntum Khaira Ummatin I believe it refers, refers to Ahmadis because it beckons us that we must tighten our belts and take our place to fight the fight with honor, with dignity against the powers of evil, against poverty, disease, and death which follow fast in the wake of sin and ignorance. And we must fight all these forces which are working to destroy the image of God in man. There comes to us from all around us a cry for help. It is a human cry of spirits in bondage, of souls in despair, of lives debased and doomed. It is a call of man to his brother. Let us follow the voice that calls us in the name of God. This is our duty and let it not be said that we did not prove equal to the task. Nothing is complete, however, without prayers. Our efforts bear fruit because of prayers and because of God's grace and his mercy. 
it is incumbent on us to pray as if everything depended on God and to work as if everything depended on us. May Allah bless us all. Wa akhru dawanan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. give you some uh, numbers, the registration numbers, total number of people who attended Jalsa was 980. The number of Jamaats represented 44. The total number of countries represented were uh, five from outside Pakistan, uh, from outside USA. Pakistan, Canada, Syria, Yemen, and UK. So we're going to close with a silent prayer. And as we do that, I would like to thank the Jalsa organizers. I think sometimes we begin to take for granted the work that goes into putting a Jalsa together. And I wish to thank the workers and the organizers for a job well done. Having come, being, I've been here for the last several years for attending the Jalsa. And I think this was probably the best organized Jalsa they had. So may Allah bless them all. Also like to congratulate the speakers for their speeches. They were well done and it appeared that all of them had spent time preparing them. And all of us represent the best of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. And we forget how exceptional our workers at the Jalsa, especially the Langar Khana people are. And we, rem are rem we are rem must remind ourselves to thank them and to thank God and offer gratitude for them. Uh, I'd like to thank the Officer Jalsa Salana, Officer Jalsa Ga, the Nazim program, Naib Amir, Dr. Hamid Rahman, and Malana Shamshad Saab for uh, also helping out with the preparation of the Jalsa and its organization. So as you leave here, please take your time and drive carefully and you'll make your, your way home from here in a safe manner. May you all be, get back safely to the comfort of your homes. So in our prayers, let us remember those who are suffering in various parts of the world under various forms of oppression and persecution, especially in Pakistan, in Syria, and in Palestine. And let us remember those who have passed away during the year. May Allah have mercy on them. May Allah have special mercy on the Ahmadi martyrs and their families. And let us pray for those who are sick and suffering May Allah heal them and grant them health and wellness. And let us pray for all those in difficulties, legal, financial, and family matters. May Allah help alleviate their distress. And let us implore Allah to help us elect good leaders so we as Americans are better able to serve mankind. May Allah protect our country, the USA. Let us pray for Khalifa al-Masih al-Khamis. May Allah grant him good health and a long life to guide us and to lead us to the victory of Islam and Ahmadiyyat. And we are the beneficiaries of the divine protection of Khilafat 
and this is our lifeline and let us hold on to it as firmly as possible. Let us also pray for Amir Saab and the missionaries and all those who sacrifice so much to serve the Jamaat. May Allah reward them abundantly. And let us also pray for our parents. We owe them a lot. May Allah have special mercy on them. And let us pray for our spouses and our children. May Allah protect them and make them true servants of Islam and Ahmadiyyat. And let us send the Rood abundantly on our greatest benefactors, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and the Promised Messiah Sallam. And let us pray that we enter the new year with increased vigor and determination to serve Allah and man to the best of our abilities and achieve true joy and tranquility and peace. And when we meet again next year in December 2014, we are a new and a more godly people. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka antas samiyul alim. Please join me in silent prayers. Amen. Uh, I mean.